Greetings. Today, I would like to talk about propagating one of my favorite native Hawaiian hibiscus. The tree is right here behind me. Um, this beautiful flower is a native Hawaiian hibiscus that we refer to as Viamia white. It comes from the Viamia Canyon on Kauai. Now, there are several different native Hawaiian hibiscus, although this one is one of my favorites. Hawaii is famous for the hibiscus flower. You will see it on motifs all over from airplanes to uh, restaurant menus, you name it. Uh, you know, you always see the uh, who the girl's got the hibiscus flower in her hair and all that stuff. Uh, actually, most of the hibiscus we have here in Hawaii are not native. They're what we call Chinese hibiscus, hibiscus sinensis. These hibiscus also grow here almost as if they were native plants, but they are introduced. This one wasn't. This one got its way here a long, long time ago somehow or another uh, and has become a native local land race. Issues, though, is that despite the fact that the Viamia white looks a lot like the Chinese hibiscus, it doesn't propagate the same way. Let me show you the difference in the plants first. This flower is one of the common Chinese hibiscus grown on the Big Island. Um, I would call this hula girl. I may or may not be that cultivar, but it sure looks like the one we used to sell in California named hula girl. Anyhow, uh, this is a Chinese hibiscus. And you can see that generally the flowers are larger, the leaves are a little bit different on these, but the main difference is the way they propagate. So, here we are in the propagation shed. Right here, I have a bucket filled with Viamia white hibiscus cuttings. This is the native Hawaiian hibiscus I was referring to. And you will see here that some of this wood is really big. I mean, there's stuff in there that is actually bigger than my thumb. Uh, and this is the main difference that I discovered between Chinese and Hawaiian hibiscus, at least this variety. When striking cuttings of Chinese hibiscus, I can often do pieces so oh, pencil size, and uh, a little larger, but generally I work with stuff that's about pencil size. On this plant, I have better success if it is two to three times the diameter of pencil upwards towards the size of my thumb and I have even made a few cuttings that were almost the size of my wrist from this plant and they take. Um, it, it doesn't like being cut into little bitty pieces. If I try to strike these cuttings as if they were Chinese hibiscus, they will fail. In fact, if we look in here, right there, I have a small cutting about pencil size and look it's dead. <laughs> it did not take. This is the smallest piece of wood in the pot and it didn't make it. Now let me show you it's the Chinese hibiscus. Right here is a pot full of Chinese hibiscus and in here you can see there's a lot of cuttings you know pencil size or so. Oh, maybe the biggest one in here is about the size of a Tipperello cigar or something. Uh, it's not very big. It's smaller than my little finger, actually. Okay, and every cutting in this pot, as far as I can see here, seems to have taken. We all have flower buds on top of everything here growing. Um, and they're all quite small. And this is the case with Chinese hibiscus. Pencil size cuttings are great. You know, foot long pencil size maybe a little bit longer as you can see I've struck some cuttings here up to maybe three feet tall they take but they have to be small diameter let's get these out of the pot see what's going on here I have roots coming out of the bottom so they should be very well well rooted I can never get enough of this plant and so I'm going to see that I get this spread out today see here look at this nice roots all over the place huh all right so the next thing I'm gonna do is just start beating and shaking work these apart okay there we go now it's pretty obvious 
that the biggest pieces have produced the best root balls. Some of the smaller pieces in here are really almost hardly rooted at all. See, look, this is, you know, close to pencil size. Ain't got much for roots on the bottom of it. This plant wants to root out from great big pieces. Okay, so here this one is, you know, reasonably rooted. And as I say, the smaller this piece of wood gets, the less vigorous they are about producing roots. And so this will be acceptable for transplanting, but it's not really exciting. Um, now, one thing that's really important when you're doing cuttings, and that's stability. If the plant is really stable in the container, it's going to root more easily. If it's rocking in the wind and so on, little root hairs break off, it won't do as well. And so I tend to place these cuttings pretty deep into the soil of the pots here. All right. And so the reason behind that is because all that soil will hold this cutting up very well. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pack this stuff down around the cutting. Uh, do not be afraid to compress the soil around your cuttings to make sure that they're good and firm. And I have one cutting here that didn't do a darn thing. It's alive, and so this will grow eventually. But I'm not going to waste a, a, a nice large container on this thing. I'm going to go ahead and strike this back into a 4-inch pot, put it back out in the nursery, and let it do some ridding first. So, when making a cutting, which that's what this is going to be, um, always make sure that the cutting does not hit the bottom of the pot. So I've already dropped a layer of soil in here. I kind of push the cutting down in that soil. I'm going to add more soil around it here. Pack it down good. So, stability is important. Now, one thing that's going to happen, too, in this one, I put the water in here. The soil is going to settle down around these cuttings. And uh, that's going to uh, make it tighter for them. They have roots. And so, they are ready to eat. There wasn't much food in that medium. And so, these are basically living off whatever was stored in the wood. So we're going to give each one of these about a teaspoonful of uh, the time-release fertilizer here. You all ask me, what is this stuff frequently? And so this is NutriCoat 180. But you can use all kinds of fertilizers. That's why I seldom talk about what I'm using, because most of you probably find a lot of this stuff is difficult to locate, because this is a commercial grower's product. All right. And you won't find it usually on the shelf at your local nursery. You're not going to find it at Home Depot. You're going to have to go into a wholesale, uh, you know, nursery supply house to find NutriCoat 180 or NutriCoat 360 or whatever it might be. Um, Osmocoat is the alternate type that is sold on the retail market. I don't use it because it doesn't come in huge 50 pound bags and it costs too much. Um, there's other things you can use. You could use organic fertilizers. Um, uh, liquid fertilizers are not desirable because they just aren't going to last long. They'll hold up maybe seven days in there and pff, they're gone. And so you really want to use like a, a, a good all-purpose organic for flowering plants, uh, which will probably have a life maybe up to about two or three months, depending on your watering and your weather. Um, the NutriCoat uh, 180 is supposed to go six months. It really doesn't do it here because we get too much rain. But it's a good product for this purpose. And you may ask yourself, <laughs> why does the Green Garden guy put so many cuttings in one container? Like this, see? That's a lot of pieces of wood in there. The reason why is it conserves space. Uh, 
we have so much room here that's set up at least for nursery and so if I take 12 cuttings put them in a two gallon bucket together and not only well, I possibly end up with 12 plants in that tiny space, whereas if I'd started them all in gallon pots or something, I'd have taken up much more area in the nursery. Not all the cuttings take. And by putting them together in a container, the ones that don't take, we just throw them out. No loss. The ones that do take, we're good. All righty, so there we go. We've propagated the native Hawaiian hibiscus, Viamia white, and I pointed out that the Viamia white will require much larger pieces of wood if you intend to propagate it. So you propagate this baby with an axe or a chainsaw, <laughs> like the, Hawaii, the Chinese hibiscus where you may use a pruning shear. Alrighty, so aloha. Y'all have a wonderful new year and hang loose.